Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Islam for Europeans. I'm your host, Robert. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel. Um, so I'm going to talk about a very controversial subject um, that I've kind of touched upon in many other videos previously, uh, but I think it deserves a standalone episode uh, just because of, you know, uh, you know, the sociological effects uh, that it has on the, on the Muslim community, on converts, on the people who uh, are involved with converts, uh, and just, you know, the, the image of Islam as, in the West as a whole. Um, and it's a term that I'm going to call uh, Dawa dating, uh, although, you know, in, in you know, the Indian subcontinent, this occurs as well, vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, Hindu and Muslim, uh, Hindus and Muslims, uh, but they kind of term it as love jihad, right? But I'm going to call it Dawa dating just because, you know, the, it's kind of like this overall intention that you want these people to become Muslim, but the means uh, that you're uh, using uh, to try to get them to convert um, are, 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 are haram, first of all, they're, they're unacceptable from an Islamic standpoint. Um, and uh, yeah, I just think it's, it's a, just a contradictory term. So, you know, like Dawa dating probably just sums it up for, you know, what we see in the West uh, a lot and, you know, by extension, you know, other uh, non-Muslim countries. Now, you know, this is Islam for Europeans. And I know normally I talk about situations related to white Muslims or, you know, uh, Muslims of European descent. But I think this affects uh, all converts to Islam. You know, it affects uh, Latinos uh, who get involved in relationships with, uh, um, with, with, uh, with Muslims and end up converting. It happens with Asians who convert to Islam, ends up with, with uh, Black uh, non-Muslims who end up converting to Islam while dating uh, a Muslim boyfriend or girlfriend. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I think, you know, its effects are very, very major. And I think for the most part, Islamic leadership, um, they either, uh, they either are aware of these kinds of situations, but they sweep it under the rug, uh, because, you know, they don't want to, you know, air out the dirty laundry of the Muslim community, or they're, you know, so deeply into their Islamic bubble, uh, that they don't realize that this goes on or don't realize the extent to which uh, it goes on. So, um, you know, Dawa dating is basically when you have a, a non-Muslim who gets involved in a relationship, uh, you know, I'm talking about, you know, like either a sexual relationship or maybe even a non-sexual relationship uh, with a, obviously, a non-practicing uh, Muslim man or woman. Now, you know, uh, usually you're going to see this when you have a non-Muslim woman dating a non-Muslim man. Um, there are several reasons for this. Um, and I think this also is a major reason why you just see more female converts to Islam in general. Um, and, you know, this has been the trend, you know, since, you know, the 70s, since they were able to record statistics on converts. And, you know, the Muslim community always thought of different ways to try to explain this. You know, it was kind of a head scratcher. You know, why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide more women than men? It just it kind of doesn't make sense. You know, their way of explaining it was, you know, women tend to be more tender hearted than men. Um, but we all know that's not the case when you look at, you know, the playing field, you know, there are several reasons why you don't see the inverse situation where you have a non-Muslim man dating a Muslim woman, uh, you know, in general, you know, you know, for just from a, a doctrine perspective in Islam, like it's, it's, it's acceptable for a Muslim man to marry a Christian or a Jewish woman, but the inverse is not allowed. You know, a Muslim woman cannot marry a Christian or Jewish man. Um, so that's one factor. But I think also another factor is that it's very taboo uh, for um, uh, a Muslim a, a, a Muslim woman uh, to be dating a, a non-Muslim man. Um, just in general. And, you know, this is the norm throughout the Arab world. I mean, like you Arab Christians, you know, this is more acceptable. Although, for, you know, like um, in, in these societies, they place far more emphasis on virginity when it comes to uh, Muslim women uh, as, opposed to, as opposed to Muslim men. Um, you know, uh, when, uh, you know, like you get married into a Muslim family, uh, if you're the man in the relationship, you know, the woman kind of just follows along, not just religiously, but also culture-wise. So you end up uh, assimilating into the, into the man's culture. So a lot of convert women, uh, you know, they're going to, you know, uh, you know, they're not really going to retain anything from their culture. They're going to assimilate into the, the Desi culture or the Arab culture or the Somali culture. Um, you know, so that, that's definitely another factor. Um, and, you know, just in general, I mean, you know, it's, you know, even though it's not Islamically acceptable, 
uh, you know, to do these things. Uh, you'll see a lot more Muslim men in the clubs, uh, in the bars, uh, in non-Muslim environments. Um, so, you know, it's just, and, you know, it's just far more acceptable, you know, it's, it's not, it's much rarer they're going to see a hijabi woman, you know, at a bar or a club trying to find a non-Muslim man, but it does happen, you know, rarely, but it's just saying it's much more rare, but for all intents and purposes, I'm just going to talk about this, you know, as a whole, um, you know, like not talking about race or gender or anything, just the whole idea of a Muslim on paper, you know, or maybe they were practicing, but, you know, level of religiosity is usually a lot lower dating a non-Muslim man or woman uh, with the intention of, you know, either getting married or having them convert to Islam or whatever. You know, there's one hadith and, you know, like that, that says, you know, whatever, st whatever starts out on wrong or, or falsehood is going to end up wrong. Right. So, you know, uh, people can talk about, you know, what are the pros and cons of, you know, like, uh, you know, hey, it's maybe a haram relationship, but hey, this person has been converting to Islam, uh, you know, that's, that's better than had they never converted to Islam. I mean, this is the wrong way of looking at things. I mean, you know, like, in general, Islam is very strict on, on gender separation. Um, you know, like, um, men and women are separated at the mosque, uh, if there's a women's section at all. Uh, most mosques in the West do have sections for women, uh, with some exceptions. Uh, but you know, just in general, like you're, you know, you're supposed to lower your gaze when you, when you see, a, a person of the opposite gender, you're not supposed to shake hands with people of the opposite gender. Um, you know, you're not supposed to talk to, uh, people of the opposite gender. They're usually in totally different chat rooms online. Um, you know, like, and this is all to prevent zina, uh, you know, uh, you know, like Allah says in the Quran, doesn't say do not commit zina uh, or, or fornication, but do not come close to uh, zina. And you know, and uh, so you know, the rules on this are very strict, right? Now, if you look at all the rules, you know, like uh, you know, and, and, and norms about you know gender separation in Islam, there's no way you can possibly justify dating uh, a non-Muslim man or woman. Uh, you know, it's just you know, it's just completely unacceptable in so many, so many particular ways, even if your intentions are good, even if your intentions are, you know, you know, we want this person to, you know, to end up converting to Islam, you know, like, uh, it's just, you know, like, I mean, like, just to give a totally different example, you know, just going to a bar in and of itself to give dawah, I mean, your intentions may be good. And, you know, like one of the one of the um, you know essential things to have a good deed accepted is intention. Your nia, you know, like I could go to a bar and say I'm going to give dollars to these people here, right? I'm going to have a pizza and a coke and just talk to random strangers and talk to them about Islam. But it's not in, it's not in our sunnah to be in an environment where alcoholic beverages are consumed, right? Uh, so, um, but you know that's the thing, you know, like us converts, you know, we're trying to build this community of converts from the ground up. So we're trying to follow the, these rules as strictly as, to a T as humanly possible, you know, like, and it's very difficult. And because we're in a non-Muslim environment, all of our families non-Muslim, all of our friends are, you know, a lot of our friends are non-Muslim. Our work environment is non-Muslim. So you know, we're trying our best, and we're trying to follow these norms. And you know, like we, you know, we convert to Islam, especially as you know, white Westerners, as these kind of atomized individuals. We don't have a Muslim so can be like the our, our African American brothers and sisters. So you know, even meeting you know another white Westerner convert who's of the opposite gender, that is difficult in and of itself to begin with, right? So we're trying to follow all these rules, and then you have a whole many uh, non-practicing Muslims. Who aren't following any of these rules right so you know they're they're going to end up for the most part of the over the majority end up dating you know these uh non-muslims usually usually women but also men as well um you know and that usually these people are not practicing muslims um so you know what are the fallout of some of these things and just as a caveat you know i think it's important that you know even though we're talking about these things these are controversial issues it's very important to keep in mind that I am not trying to disparage, um, you know, these, uh, 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 you know, men and women, mostly women, but also men as well, who end up converting to Islam via, you know, like a marriage to, you know, a, a Muslim, um, you know, like their intentions may be pure, you know, maybe they, you know, do look at Islam and they believe that it's the truth. And it just so happens that they're, you know, like um, in a relationship with, you know, a Muslim man or woman.
And maybe their intentions are sincere and maybe they're trying not to commit adultery. Uh, so they do want to uh, end up marrying this person. Um, you know, so it's very important not to disparage them. Uh, I'm not trying to insult them. Um, I'm not trying to say that they're converting for the wrong reasons. Um, you know, I'm not um, looking into their heart and trying to look at their intention. Um, and, you know, I, you know, like, and I think it's important for those who are following, you know, Islam for Europeans, uh, you know, to, 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 to think the same thing, you know, like we always want to make, you know, the best excuses for our brothers and sisters. You know, honestly, I feel bad for them because, you know, they were stuck, they were unaware that in Islam, you're not supposed to be in these types of, of relationships, right? Um, you know, so I think that's one important thing to keep in mind. But I mean, you know, moving forward with this, you know, um, I've been a Muslim for 21 years and, you know, I've, many of my good friends are converts for a very long time. And, you know, the effects of, you know, dawah dating, uh, are just, you know, uh, enormous. And most of the, most of the time it's negative. And, you know, I'm going to get into some of those reasons why. And that, first of all, usually, you know, with these relationships, it's a disconnect in terms of religiosity level or the religiousness of the couple, because usually, you know, these non-practicing Muslim men or women, uh, you know, they, if they were practicing, if they were, you know, praying five times a day and, uh, you know, like believing in their religion wholeheartedly, they wouldn't be engaging in these types of behaviors. They wouldn't be going to bars. They wouldn't be, you know, trying to date uh, non-Muslim men or women. Uh, so usually these people are not practicing, right? And, you know, it's either one or two scenarios vis-a-vis -vis their family. Usually their family is either, it's either one or two scenarios. Either A, they don't care. You know, they're you know, liberal Muslims. Um, in these types of scenarios, they're kind of more accepting of, you know, the, the potential, uh, you know, like son-in-law or daughter-in-law. Um, and then you have the other situation in which you have the family who's very religious, but their son or daughter is not practicing. Right. So those types of relationships tend to tend to go south much more often because you have a situation where these people are usually dating in secret. And in order to make it acceptable for the family, even though the family may be more opposed to it, uh, you know, converting to Islam uh, is, you know, and you know, getting married is probably, you know, the best potential outcome where, you know, the family can try to save face, you know, with, with, with the rest of the extended family. Um, and, you know, like some scenarios really go south and, you know, usually the family's totally against it. Uh, you see scenarios like that. You see scenarios where, you know, you have the, a Muslim man dating a non-Muslim woman, you know, they want to get married, uh, but they have, he hasn't told his family about it. And then he'll tell his family about it. And even if she wants to convert to Islam, his mom or dad will go on a hunger strike uh, until, you know, they, uh, they, 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 they dump this person. And, you know, the reasoning behind that is usually, you know, tribal. Uh, they want their son or daughter to marry uh, a Muslim from the same background. Um, and, you know, I am not, um, I'm not here to criticize these families either. Obviously, the son or daughter, you know, as strict as it may seem, they went behind their back, you know, and, you know, they are expecting them to be okay with them marrying into, you know, marrying a convert. But then you have to think about, you know, the, the family side, you know, what is the convert's family like? Are, is their family totally opposed to Muslims? Um, you know, like, is their family very liberal? Is their family going to try, try to feed my granddaughter or my, my, my granddaughter or my grandson pork and alcohol? Um, you know, what is the rest of the, what is the rest of the extended family going to think? Um, you know, what about the wedding? You know, like, are we going to invite this convert's family to the wedding? What's the reaction going to be? Uh, it's just, it's a cult, it's a clash of cultures. So you have varying reactions from, you know, the side on the Muslim partner's family, but what about the non-Muslim partners, uh, side of the family, you know? Usually have, it's usually two different scenarios as well. It's either one, the family is very liberal. Uh, very accepting. So they don't care if their son or daughter marries into a Muslim family. I mean, usually they don't care if they're dating, you know, if they have uh, sex before marriage, you know, because they're not Muslim, you know, you know, to them, it doesn't matter to them. So in those particular cases, usually it's, it's better. Um, yeah, it's usually a better scenario for the convert. Um, and then more often than not, you see a situation where uh, the family hates Islam. Uh, you know, they, they maybe have an anti-immigrant attitude. And, you know, the son or the daughter is rebelling from that. You know, they hate the fact that their family's, you know, racist. Um, and, you know, dating a Muslim man or woman is seen as kind of like this act of rebellion. 
you know, like um, they're doing it to piss off their family. There may be one of the reasons, like, again, I'm not doubting their sincerity. Maybe they're sincere about Islam, but, you know, pre be prepared for a very difficult time because, you know, you're going to have a, a, a clash, a very difficult clash. Usually this convert ends up you know, losing the support from a lot of their family members. And, you know, the, 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 the born Muslim family and the born Muslim spouse is going to have to pick up the slack, you know, and are they prepared for that? You know, so, um, you know, it sounds great on paper. You know, it sounds like, you know, you know, like, even though, you know, it's unacceptable from an Islamic standpoint that, hey, you know, someone is converting to Islam, you know, someone, Allah is guiding this person. And, you know, like, um, it may seem on the surface that, yeah, this is a, this is a, a much better scenario than before. But, you know, tragically, if and when it doesn't work out, if and when it ends in divorce, if and when, you know, the, um, in a, you know, they end up uh, uh, breaking up uh, for whatever reason, uh, it's even worse when kids are involved. Usually what happens is that, you know, the convert tragically ends up leaving the Muslim community and sometimes Islam altogether. Um, a lot of these, you know, like uh, converts are left, you know, are in abusive relationships or they left abusive relationships with this, uh, uh, this not practicing Muslim man or woman. Uh, and, you know, like they're left with a lot of trauma and it's, you know, like it's tied into the religion, you know, and, uh, Tragically, you know, their non-Muslim family will end up saying, you know, I told you so, you know, like uh, getting into this kind of relationship. I don't, I do think that, you know, there's nothing we can do about this directly. Um, you know, like you have a religious leadership that usually doesn't ask questions. Uh, you know, like they usually they'll have a lot of times where uh, the non-Muslim, the, the Muslim practice, non -pra the Muslim non-practicing partner will bring in this person who may have already converted, or maybe they're thinking about converting, bring them to the imam or the religious leadership and say, hey, we want to get married. There's nothing much you can say. I mean, why a lot of these imams will not pry into the uh, into the business of these people. And, you know, a lot of them are thinking, you know, we want to get this nikah done because if they don't, they're going to they're gonna commit zina. So no one's going to, the imam is usually not going to advise them that this is probably not a good idea, uh, that there's a lot of potential pitfalls and even if they'll, you know, what are you going to say to that person at that point? You know, usually there's a lot of language barriers, um, you know, and uh, even if you were to say, you know, don't do A, B, C, and D, a lot of these things are already, have already been done. You know, like the, the ink is already dried and you already have uh, a Muslim who's not really practicing all that much. So, you know, there's not much they can do. A lot of these imams who are doing these marriage certificates, they, I think they kind of realize this, realize this in the back of their head, but what are they going to say? I'm not going to conduct this marriage because it's a haram relationship. Uh, usually that's not the case. And usually, you know, they just don't ask questions. Uh, once in a while, you do get like a based, you know, like, um, you know, Dai, who says, you know, like, uh, who hears about these kind of relationship and say, you know what, you should dump your boyfriend, or your, your Muslim boyfriend, because he's not good for you. He's not a practicing Muslim. Uh, you know, but at the end of the day, he can only say so much. And usually what happens is that these in these types of relationships, they've already been dating for such a long time that no one's going to change their mind. You know, they're love struck. Uh, you know, they're not going to dump this person because who are they going to who, who are they going to be left with? Really? You know, they're going to get a negative reaction out of this um, out of this out of this out of this Muslim person. Uh, you know, and, you know, that may, it may turn really sour, you know, he may, he or she may try to defame this person, uh, he or she tried to, you know, like, uh, I try to abuse this person and, you know, it becomes such an embarrassing situation that a lot of converts just don't simply want to talk about it or be involved in a Muslim community whatsoever, just because, you know, the, they burn so many bridges right off the bat. You know, so uh, what how, what do we do about this? You know, you can't really, you know, you can't tell non-practicing Muslim men and women, don't do this. You know, like, I mean, you can, but it, it's still going on. You know, like um, not every Muslim in the West, you know, in fact, the large chunk of them are not practicing their religion whatsoever. Or maybe they're semi-practicing. They're like Ramadan Muslims. They'll pray during Ramadan. They'll fast during Ramadan. But, you know, they they don't pray five times a day. Maybe they go to Juma prayer once a week. And some of them just aren't practicing whatsoever. You know, they're like Muslim by name, right? So you can't really force them to, A, not date non-Muslim people, and B, you know, start practicing, uh, ask them to start practicing more. Um, 
you know, so what do we do about it? I think the best remedy is, you know, what we've been suggesting is that if you already have a sub-community of converts in place already, that's another avenue for people to learn about Islam. So you have a lot of people who are interested in Islam in the West. You know, they want to know more about it. Many of them are interested in it. And I, I sincerely believe that a lot of these people are sincere about, you know, wanting to know more about Islam. But what happens is they end up getting into a relationship with a non-Muslim man or woman. Uh, and that's, you know, kind of serves as their, their conduit or their avenue to end up converting to Islam. But if you have a sub-community that's already in place, ready to take these people in, ready to teach them about Islam without being involved in a relationship, um, you know, like it may prevent, you know, people from getting into these types of relationships in the first place. And I think that's what you see with a lot of African-American, uh, you know, Muslims uh, or converts uh, in the West that a lot of them, you know, con convert to Islam through the traditional method, um, you know, or just having a lot of non family members who are already Muslim. They already have a brother or a sister who's Muslim. Right. So, um, you know, and I think just this all ties into my whole paradox that uh, because, you know, in the Anglosphere among white Westerners, there's such uh, negative attitudes, not all, but some, you know, white Westerners have a negative attitude towards Islam, especially in Europe proper. And, you know, what this is doing is this is preventing a naturally what would normally happen in, in other non-Muslim countries, people converting to Islam en masse, right? So it's, you already see, you know, you already have a subcommittee to belong to if you're a white Westerner, if they didn't have this anger towards Islam, um, it would be far easier to A, convert to Islam and B, find someone who's gone through the same experiences, who's already a convert, um, you know, where you can, yeah, inshallah, you know, get married and have kids and whatnot. Uh, and then the culture of the people is maintained by Islam. So, um, yeah, very controversial stuff, but it is very important to talk about, you know, you do see this a lot, especially in high school. Um, and, you know, maybe these kids are trying their best not to, you know, commit uh, zina, you know, maybe they're in a relationship where they don't want to. And, you know, that can happen. You know, but it's still the end of the day, Islamically, it's unacceptable. You know, I think it's, you know, we have these, us as converts, you know, who converted to Islam without, you know, not involved in, an, in, a, in a haram relationship. You know, we went through the traditional avenue of learning about Islam, you know, on our own or, you know, with a mentor, with a teacher, um, you know, like uh, it wasn't tied into a relationship. But I think, you know, for a lot of people, they're in these types of situations. And, you know, the best thing we can do is just try to, you know, give them the best type of education. And at the end of the day, they're their own person and they make their own decisions. Um, so, yeah, to, to sum up, I think that, you know, it's an important uh, aspect that's kind of beneath the surface. Uh, you know, that's kind of kind of not talked about really uh, in the West. Uh, I know in, Indi in India, it's called love jihad. Um, but I do think Islamic leadership, you know, they really need to put their foot down because, you know, they can talk about all these strict gender norms uh, until they're blue in the face. Um, but, you know, when it comes to, you know, celebrity, you know, situations in which you have non-practicing Muslim people dating, uh, you know, or being involved in relationships with non-Muslims and the hope that they'll get married or convert to Islam, you know, like um, it's almost like these rules just go out the window, you know, like, you know, you look at uh, celebrity situations in which, you know, you had someone who was dating, a Muslim who is dating a non-Muslim. Um, and the perfect example is Dodi al Faid. you know, when he uh, was uh, dating uh, Princess Diana, you know, like, um, and, you know, tra that, and that's a perfect example of a, a relationship like that that ended tragically. Uh, I'm not saying that's going to happen to every person, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, like, um, that's usually, that's the worst possible outcome. But, you know, it's still a situation where you have, you know, like, um, someone, I guess, who's rebelling against the system and ends up dating a Muslim. So, I mean, you can say, oh, yeah, there's pros and cons to both, you know, like uh, maybe Princess Diana ended up converting to Islam before she died. You know, by the end of the day, it's still Islamically unacceptable. I mean, like, you know, if they were in a Muslim country, they would be whipped. You know, um, and, you know, another example is uh, Jemima Goldsmith, you know, like who ended up marrying um, you know, Imran Khan. They had kids together. Uh, but and that look at that there's another perfect example and, and ended in divorce um and you know like uh i just don't think that it's a sustainable model i mean to, to be honest i mean um putting all this stuff about it being islamically unacceptable to the side i mean 
you know, you're, <laughs> it's not the traditional method in which, you know, people converted to Islam in the pre-modern era. Um, you know, usually people will convert to Islam in, in groups. Uh, and that's a far healthier way of, you know, conversion because, you know, you already have a traditional avenue to find out about Islam, convert. And then once you convert to Islam, you already have a traditional um, space and a traditional group of people who are already in your situation, who are already converted. And then you can follow the traditional method of going through a wali and, you know, you know, um, you know, like having the families meet together and, and, and talk about your potential, potential prospects of being married. And so, yeah, so that's all I can, you know, talk about, in the, you know, about a 20 minute period. I know there's a lot to talk about with this issue, uh, but let, please let me know what you think in the chat. Um, you know, and uh, great news, you know, I think after I make this video, inshallah, we'll be reaching 2000 subscribers. Um, so, you know, alhamdulillah, thank you for all of your support. Uh, from Islam for Europeans. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you uh, for supporting our channel uh, all throughout the years. Um, and uh, may Allah you know, guide our brothers and sisters uh, to Islam. May Allah guide our families and communities. And, and may Allah help our oppressed brothers and sisters all throughout the world. So that's my time for the day. I'm, I'm Rob from Islam for Europeans. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.